you Diddy or whoever you is, TG Jakes, any of them, the, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. All of these uh, big deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's Oprah coming next. Oprah. <laughs> 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 Once established this at the place of truth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So rumor has it that Cat Williams really stirred the pot with his recent chatter about Diddy's sketchy lifestyle. But here's the crazy part. Folks are whispering that he wasn't flying solo on this one. Word on the street suggests that OPR and Naomi Campbell might have been in the loop about these shady dealings. So what exactly did Cat say? Earlier this year during his interview, Cat Williams revealed that karma is about to knock on Diddy's and other elite's doors. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is, TG Jakes, any of them, the, all, Every, all lies will be exposed, that's all. Well, it seems he was right. You see, Diddy's properties recently got raided by Homeland Security, and it was such a scene. The federal agents seized a number of electronic devices as part of the court-authorized searches of Combs' two properties. Following this, Combs' attorney released a statement saying, Yesterday, there was a gross overuse of military-level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs' residences. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees employees were treated. Mr. Combs was never detained but spoke to and cooperated with authorities. Despite media speculation, neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested nor has their ability to travel been restricted in any way. This unprecedented ambush, paired with an advanced coordinated media presence, leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. There has been no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. Well, one can argue that Diddy is still innocent until proven guilty but more recent revelations from Diddy's former bodyguard Gene Deal are proving that we still don't have the full picture of Diddy's shady dealings. Gene shed light on the latest lawsuit against hip-hop mogul Diddy. The lawsuit, filed by producer Lil Rod, alleges disturbing coercion tactics orchestrated by Diddy, including attempts to manipulate individuals into intimate encounters against their will. Speaking on the matter, Gene Deal expressed little surprise at the allegations, citing a pattern of behavior he claims to have witnessed over the years. According to Deal, Diddy's actions are not new. A uh, uh, leopard don't change his spots, and Diddy been doing this for a real long time, bruh. The interview delved into the details of the lawsuit, with Deal providing insights into the alleged modus operandi employed by Diddy. Lil Rod's lawsuit claims that Diddy orchestrated a scenario where a female acquaintance attempted to engage in intimate activities with Lil Rod in front of Diddy and others. Despite Lil Rod's refusal, the pressure allegedly persisted, revealing a disturbing trend of coercion within Diddy's circles. According to Deal, Diddy's tactics allegedly involve using women to manipulate men into compromising situations, often involving sub substances and coercion. Bringing girls on to try to convince this other guy to be in a room with another man and all his other Yo, it, it all sounds familiar, man. Now this gets us to Naomi Campbell. Naomi Campbell and Diddy have been thicker than thieves since the 90s. In fact, the two allegedly dated once upon a time. However, neither party wishes to comment on said rumors. But despite the plausible romance, Naomi and Diddy share a special bond, one that the two have spoken about a number of times, claiming they are the best of friends. Over 20 years on from those rumors, the two are now said to be just friends. In case you happen to live under a rock and don't know her, Naomi Campbell is renowned not only for her striking beauty, but also for her illustrious career as a model. With her captivating presence on the runway and in front of the camera, she has established herself as an iconic figure in the fashion industry. Her grace, elegance, and undeniable charisma have made her a favorite among designers, photographers, and audiences worldwide. Throughout her career, Campbell has graced the covers of countless magazines, walked the catwalks for the most prestigious fashion houses, and starred in numerous high-profile campaigns. Her versatility and longevity in the industry speak volumes about her talent and dedication. With her unparalleled beauty and unmatched experience, Naomi Campbell would undoubtedly be the perfect candidate for the likes of Diddy. You see, Naomi Campbell was once allegedly present at a party where Diddy reportedly sought to take advantage of Snoop Dogg. Luckily for Snoop, his wife came in the nick of time and saved him. Shantae walked in there and called his name one time, Calvin. <laughs> In front of Naomi Campbell. Yes, sir. In front of Diddy.
Anyway, apart from being successful and beautiful, Naomi has a long history of mistreating others. In fact, between 1998 and 2009, she was convicted several times for putting her hands on people. In 2000, she pleaded guilty after putting her hands on her former assistant and hitting her on the head with a telephone. Then, in 2007, Naomi was convicted again after getting physical with her former housekeeper. However, she showed no regret and famously attended her community service wearing designer outfits, real fur, and a $300,000 Dolce & Gabbana gown. But it didn't take long before this arrogant attitude caught up with her again. In June 2008, she was sentenced to 200 hours of community service for putting her hands on two police officers at London Heathrow Airport. But this still wasn't the end of her legal troubles. Less than two years later, a court in Italy gave Naomi a six-month suspended prison sentence after she physically attacked a paparazzo who took pictures of her and her then-boyfriend, Russian oligarch Vladimir Deronin. Now, now, speaking of Naomi's connections to shady rich men, there's been a lot of speculation over the years that she might have helped some of these men commit serious crimes. Let's start with her friendship with former Liberian dictator Charles Taylor. In August 2010, Naomi had to testify in Taylor's war crimes trial and give evidence on blue diamonds she received from him in South Africa in 1997. She claimed that the diamonds were given to her as a gift by unknown men that she assumed were sent by Taylor. But see, the problem was that Naomi changed her story. She first claimed Taylor never gave her diamonds, and it was only after she was forced to testify under oath that she admitted she received precious stones from the dictator. Campbell denied the allegations to ABC News before storming out of the interview. You received a diamond from I Charles. I received a diamond, and I'm not going to speak about that. Thank you very much. But what she told ABC News was a lie. She did receive diamonds from Taylor, as she acknowledged under oath, describing a bizarre middle-of-the-night scene outside her bed. When I was sleeping, I had a knock at my door and I opened my door and two men uh, were there and gave me a pouch and said a gift for you. Campbell claimed that she discovered only later that they might be blood diamonds supplied by Taylor, but this account was contradicted in court by fellow guest Mia Farrow, who said Naomi was expecting a huge diamond from the warlord. It was never made clear why he would make such a gift. Campbell's former agent Carol White, who had also been present, told the court that Taylor and Naomi were flirting during the dinner and that her client excitedly leaned back in her chair and confided to her, he's going to give me some diamonds. Taylor was jailed for 50 years for war crimes. A spokesman for Miss Campbell said she had never attempted to take the diamonds in question out of South Africa, a point established by the court. Now let's talk about Naomi's friendship with a different kind of criminal, Harvey Weinstein. In August 2019, the Daily Mail published a detailed report on Naomi's friendships with a hair-raising cast of characters from Harvey Weinstein to Jeffrey Epstein and Kevin Spacey. As the Mail pointed out, Weinstein was often pictured with Naomi prior to his arrest, and he attended her infamous week-long 40th birthday party in France. Weinstein's former driver later revealed that Weinstein nearly lost his life at the party when his gastric band failed and a surgeon had to be called. However, it's unclear what Weinstein was doing at the party when the incident happened. As for Jeffrey Epstein and his accomplice Ghislaine Maxwell, there's plenty of evidence of Naomi mingling with these two. In fact, unsealed documents from Maxwell's trial showed that Naomi took trips on Epstein's private jet. And then, this picture went viral, showing Virginia Roberts, the alleged victim of Epstein and Prince Andrew on a yacht party for Naomi's 31st birthday. The photo also shows Ghislaine Maxwell in the background while Naomi is shown standing next to her then-boyfriend, Italian businessman Flavio Briatore. When she was later questioned on her connection to Epstein, Naomi claimed her boyfriend introduced them at her birthday party, and she admitted seeing Epstein front row at multiple Victoria's Secret shows. However, she denied knowing anything about his crimes. Now, when all those allegations about Diddy surfaced, Naomi's name popped popped up. Naomi and Diddy have been close for decades, and they were even rumored to have dated back in 2001. However, Naomi now prefers to refer to Diddy as her brother. But get this, when all those allegations about Diddy surfaced, Naomi quickly deleted a photo of her with Diddy and Janet Jackson from her Instagram. According to Page Six, the photo was taken just days before Cassie filed her lawsuit, and Naomi partied with Diddy in London to celebrate his 54th birthday and the release of his new album. So, 
we're not sure why Naomi bothered to delete this photo when the internet is flooded with many other photos of her and Diddy partying, attending red carpet events, and even traveling together. Not just that, but there's also a lot of evidence of Naomi being friends with Diddy while he was dating Cassie. And then on top of all this, Kenyan comedian Elsa Majimbo recently stirred the pot by sharing her story of how she met Naomi when she was 19. In a lengthy, now-deleted video still being widely circulated, Elsa described meeting Naomi on a trip to Nairobi, where she and her brother were invited to do some further travel with the supermodel. Naomi was coming to Nairobi to do some shopping. Um, she was on holiday, but on a remote place. So she was in Nairobi doing shopping. And I texted her and she told me she's in Nairobi. So I was so excited to meet her. Elsa said that during a beach day on that trip, Naomi pitched the idea of doing a documentary about Elsa's life in Kenya. After the trip, when Elsa encountered one of Naomi's acquaintances who had been on the trip with them, the person remarked that Naomi took credit for Elsa's career, a claim that Elsa vehemently denied. Months later, she got a phone call from Naomi slamming her for not giving her the credit she felt she deserved. According to Elsa, she already had a documentary in the works that was premiering at the Tribeca Film Festival. When Naomi got wind of this, assuming Elsa had gone rogue with the film she pitched to Elsa, she said Naomi threatened her with legal action, saying she would sue her for the rights to the documentary. Elsa spent the next several months trying to make things right, and that she was running into major roadblocks in her budding career as a model, and that things were going haywire for her. Elsa recalls meeting former British Vogue editor-in-chief Edward Enenful and hearing an unspecified remark he said that tipped her off that perhaps Naomi had blacklisted her in the fashion industry, an experience that she says prompted her to begin an unhealthy relationship with she went on to make things right with Naomi, informing her of every single move she made, which appeased Naomi, but made Elsa uncomfortable. When she realized that it was not normal or healthy and that she was feeling controlled, she says she ceased communication entirely. We're not friends, we're not enemies, we're not anything, just not really in association. We're just strangers, Elsa concluded. Since sharing the video, social media users have chimed in with their own reactions. Some say they feel like based on previous experiences people have shared about Naomi, that everything else Elsa is saying is true, and others say Elsa should have kept her experience with Naomi to herself, given Naomi's level of power and fame. Anyway, when Naomi is not busy introducing young girls to controversial Hollywood elites, she allegedly hangs out with gun-pushing billionaires Gaston and Catherine Glock. Gaston Glock manufactures one of the most famous brands of handgun in the world, but despite her humanitarian credentials, Campbell saw nothing wrong in accepting an invitation to his 90th birthday party in the foothills of the Austrian Alps in 2019 and her reason for attending the lavish event, where she was photographed smiling winsomely with Catherine, Mr. Glock's much younger wife? The model explained she was there to support the Glock's horse charity. In any case, apart from Naomi Campbell, even popular show host OPR Wifery has also been linked to Campbell's shady dealings with controversial elites. For context, in 2017, British actress Katie and Noble said that Harvey Weinstein used OPR Winfrey and Naomi Campbell to dupe her into thinking he would help her with her career, only to use her for Apparently, she was head over heels impressed when she first met Weinstein at an event in London because he was hanging out with model Campbell and had megastar OPR swinging off his arm. And he was with people in which I admired dearly. He was with Naomi Campbell, he had Oprah Winfrey there with him, who entered the room and was swinging off his arm and instead Weinstein used promises of career advancement to lure the actress to his hotel room in Cannes France where he forced himself on her after meeting Weinstein in London Noble said she thought nothing of bringing her showreel to his hotel room when she saw him again in Cannes in February 2014 once inside the hotel room however he didn't seem that interested in my showreel Noble said instead he began touching her while discussing hooking her up with a modeling agency in London. He said, I need to know you really like me, Noble said. I have all the information we need. I just need to know you really like me. The incident ended in the bathroom, where he forced Noble to perform intimate acts in front of the bathroom mirror, she said. Afterward, Weinstein failed to help her with her career as promised. It's worth mentioning that OPR and Campbell weren't the ones who persuaded or pressured Noble to associate with Weinstein at that time. It was Weinstein acting on his own who lured the British actress. However, the fact that the two A-list celebrities were swinging off his arms did little to help the situation. Anyway, OPR Winfrey has also been accused by 50 Cent of allegedly supporting these wealthy individuals. You see, as 50 Cent was working his way up in the world, he wanted to solidify his status by appearing on Oprah's show. This was a big deal not only for a former 
from Jamaica, Queens, but also to prove to his grandmother, a huge OPR fan, that he was achieving something. However, when the idea was pitched to OPR, she didn't seem interested in what 50 Cent had to offer. She was completely against everything that was in my music, 50 said, so she ain't never gonna have me on that show. I'm never gonna reach that platform, which is confirmation of you being a huge success. So I just said, okay, if we can't be friends, then at least let's be enemies. But that's not the only reason why Fifth doesn't like OPR. So, rumor has it that OPR has been turning her back on black artists and cozying up to none other than the snooty Hollywood elites. And get this, some of these elites include controversial figures like Harvey Weinstein and Jeffrey Epstein. For context, OPR was once close with Harvey, and she even showed him sympathy even though he is a disgusting man and he deserves to rot in jail. But it's hard to understand why OPR wanted to be best friends with someone like Harvey Weinstein. They had a very warm friendship, and the photos show. Some people actually believe that OPR convinced some actresses to hook up with Harvey Weinstein. In fact, Rose McGowan tweeted out, I'm glad more people are seeing the ugly truth of OPR. I wish she were real, but she isn't. OPR previously attempted to speak out on Harvey Weinstein, but she never really got to the point and you can tell that she was trying to protect him. I think that this is yeah, I'm always trying to look for the rainbow in the cloud, the whatever is the silver lining. And so I think this is a watershed moment. Of course, OPR was trying to change the focus and make it seem like everyone else was the problem except for Harvey. But let's talk about the strange difference in Oprah's behavior when she deals with people like Harvey compared to someone like Michael Jackson. Back in early 2019, there was a documentary made about Harvey Weinstein called Untouchable. It premiered at Sundance, but it didn't get much attention from the media, and OPR didn't say a word about it. But when it comes to the documentary about Michael Jackson leaving Neverland, OPR decided to promote it everywhere. After Leaving Neverland aired, OPR even hosted a special show about it. This raised questions about why she chose to do that, and not something similar for Harvey Weinstein. She invited some of Michael Jackson's supposed victims to share their stories on her show, but didn't mention any plans to invite Harvey Weinstein's victims to talk about what they went through. This difference made people wonder about Oprah's intentions, and why she seemed to protect her friend Harvey Weinstein while putting the spotlight on Michael Jackson. What made this situation even more interesting was that Harvey Weinstein was already a convicted criminal, and there was plenty of evidence against him showing his guilt. So why did OPR seem to avoid talking about him or giving his victims a chance to speak out? The fact that she didn't address his story or provide a platform for his victims left many people puzzled and led to accusations that she was picking and choosing who to hold accountable. One couldn't help but feel a sour taste in their mouth when considering the timing and circumstances of Oprah's focus on Michael Jackson. It was worth noting that Jackson had passed away over a decade ago, rendering him unable to defend himself against the allegations brought forward on Oprah's show. Meanwhile, Harvey Weinstein remained alive and kicking, with numerous victims who had bravely come forward to share their harrowing experiences. So why did Weinstein's story not receive the same attention and scrutiny? It raised legitimate concerns about Oprah's motives, and whether she was attempting to justify or protect individuals with a history of bad behavior. The stark contrast between the treatment of Michael Jackson and Harvey Weinstein cast a shadow of doubt over Oprah's intentions. It raised questions about her commitment to justice and her willingness to hold powerful figures accountable. With Weinstein's extensive list of victims and his criminal conviction, one would have expected him to be at the forefront of discussions surrounding a ban misconduct. Yet, Oprah's apparent silence on this matter left room for speculation and invited skepticism about her true intentions. Amidst the swirling controversy, surrounding OPR Winfrey's association with notorious figures like Harvey Weinstein and Jeffrey Epstein, the online sphere exploded with outrage. The accusations leveled against the renowned TV personality reached a crescendo, with some going as far as accusing her of orchestrating a sinister S-ring. Such shocking allegations against OPR forced her into a corner, compelling her to address the rampant rumors that had spiraled out of control. Just got a phone call that my name is trending, Winfrey wrote on Twitter, adding, and being trolled for some awful fake thing. It's not true. Haven't been raided or arrested. Just sanitizing and self-distancing with the rest of the world. Stay safe, everybody. In any case, although OPR and Naomi Campbell have not been explicitly mentioned in any of Diddy's lawsuits, fans believe that they each should also be held accountable for their wrongdoings and for misleading young people in the industry. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.